Well, that was a convenient time for that draft sound because we were done anyway. But the, the pick's in. Jay Wayne, who you got? You're on the clock. Well, I got one, two, and I'm, I'm going Geis. Going Geis. No slide here. No way, man. Big slide for him in the NFL draft. Seventh running back off the board. I was like, whoa, what is happening here? I didn't even know everything that was going on. We had to discuss it, had to look it up, had to figure out, like reading into it. Teams were saying he has immaturity issues, they're concerned over how his, he handles his emotions. They called him high maintenance. They suspect he's gay. They say he'll need mentorship and structure <laughs> and it, to help him out as a pro. I'm not sure Washington is the best place for that, but I don't really care. I don't care. Right. Um, sure. You don't think Washington's the best place because of just the way their organization is run? Right. Right. Which, which so, <laughs> so apparently, some more about Geis and why he slid, right? Apparently, TMZ had some embar- embarrassing story about him. They came out and denied that. Um, he he fired his agent through this whole process. He went on Sirius XML or XM NFL radio and said that teams were asking him if he liked men and if his mother was a prostitute. The NFL denied these claims. Ultimately, Geis came out and, and said he lied because the NFL was gonna basically blackball him if he didn't say he was gonna if he didn't say he was lying. And like we're not here to necessarily speculate on the intent or appropriateness of questions. That's not really what I'm here to do. I have no doubt in my own opinion that those questions were asked. And right. They just want to gauge his reaction. Let's not pretend the NFL doesn't have all the money. And when you have all the money and you pretty much could do nothing wrong. Right. You, you get to do basically whatever you whatever want. That's you just want. the way this you world works. You get to do it and it's wrong and then you know it's wrong and then you just cover it and up. And then you say, you no, we, did, we didn't do that. No first way. of all, who you cares? make him look like the idiot. But who, cares right. if, who cares if he's gay? And if they asked him about it, shame on them. But then, like Casey's saying, big big NFL guy comes in here and is like, you know what? Uh, we don't like that you told people about this stuff, and we're going to cover it up, and you're going to go out there and say you lied, or either we're going to, you're going to, you know, we're going to. Inevitably, even though he came out and said he lied, which he probably didn't lie, that he, like you said, he probably no got asked those questions. He still slid down the draft board far enough to cost him millions of dollars already. Right. Yep. His first contract just got significantly worse oh, yeah. on that slide. And right. I, I don't think he lied about that, but then they, they got him in the building and they were asking, you know, the Redskins building, first day in, they were interviewing him and, and they were like, you know, do you regret anything you did? Would you change anything? Uh, you know, how do you feel about the draft? And he was like, oh, I wouldn't change anything. I'm just happy to be and then he lied he said i'm happy to be working for a great organization with great owners and i was like ah oh, maybe he did lie i don't know <laughs> he's lying right now <laughs> we know he's lying not, now. not good for your case here buddy yeah, i was gonna <laughs> but, defend you but <laughs> i mean like like you said we're not here to speculate about what may have been said or or, or not asked or any right, of that stuff right. but like i mean judging from where this kid came from and how he how he got to where he he got like if you're gonna ask that dude these questions i mean you might should expect to maybe him get grab, a real him, answer. He might grab you by the throat. Right. right. About to get a real answer. He should have. Have he you didn't. seen him play football? He's about to, he right. might grab you by the throat. He's about right. to keep it real. But he right. didn't. He didn't He didn't do any of that. He keeps you know? it real. And I don't care. Maybe don't, he did, and that's what they're upset about. Right. Yeah. So my guy, they're like, oh, well, they're, psycho, they're psychoanalyzing him, and, and he should just know to keep it. Like, come on, man. This yeah. is a young kid. Maybe You're you, asking him these ridiculous questions. Maybe right. you ask him if his mom is a is a hooker. And he grabbed right. you by the throat. Yeah. Right. And you're like, Which he you're lucky he right. didn't just drop you right there. <laughs> right. That's what I would want. I want you to, shh, don't talk about my mom. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and, like I you mean, said, have you seen me run? Speculation, but <laughs> right. any, anyhow. And I don't care about any of this. Right. I don't either. care about any of this. It so, doesn't change anything the, right. for me. So you obviously just picked him at the one, two. I'm going one, two. I mean, this kid has come so far in life. The neighborhood he grew up in, and you alluded to it, was literally named The Bottom. Like, from the bottom to the top. That's where Geis has come. Like, his dad was murdered at the age five. So, like, for him to make it this far, and he's never been in any kind of trouble. He's never been in any legal trouble. He's never been arrested. Like, the high school coach came out and said after the draft that he's he never had any infractions or issues in high school. The biggest problem they had with him was his dumb facial hair. Boom. He was like, you know... The the, the, the Yankees pubes- wouldn't the pubes- allow this. If that's the worst you got. If right. If that's the worst you got. Right. I mean, I, I I hate this selection for 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 our boy P. Ryan. Yeah, we got to have a small funeral oh, procession. Funeral. We're gonna fire old, off some old Samaje P. Ryan. I, you know, he's Rest my boy. Peace. Love the guy. Need something to probably happen for him here <laughs> to uh, remain relevant at the moment. But I'm I'm still I'm I'm you gonna go boy, pick bro. up all of the bottom end P. Ryan that I can and just stash him <laughs> for a while. Absolutely. Bottom end P. Ryan. Edge of but, the, but let's not let's not act like Chris Thompson is the the poster staple. child for health around over here. Sure, right. And guys, although I think very capable in the passing game, isn't like the most like. I mean, if they lose Thompson, right. they're going to be 
Hey, and let's not act. Down. Look, first of all, yes, let's not act act like Thompson is the pillar for health, and let's not act like Geist doesn't run like he doesn't care if he plays next week. Right. True. That's one of the reasons why you love Geist because he is running with reckless abandon, Yo. and that's those types of runners. All of a sudden, they might be out a couple of weeks. So, up. so I, I read an article about how John Gruden was, uh, Jay Gruden was saying something about you know how. We're we're just we're we're not worried about any of that stuff. He's he's we brought him in here to be the one and two. We got Chris Thompson for for the three to you know so we don't have to worry about his pass catching ability. He you know needs to work on a little bit and maybe some pass blocking and stuff like that. Um, but does it so does the slide and then kind of the one two the one two grinder uh, and maybe some Chris Thompson change your opinion on? I know you obviously just took him one mm-hmm. two, so it didn't change it for you. Does it change anything for you, Baco? Right, you got the people that you know. You got your Rashad Penny now. That's all of a sudden the Seahawks are throwing their thing <laughs> in on, and you got Chubb, and you got Sony Michelle, and you got Carryon Johnson, you got Rojo, you got Ronald Jones. So you got options, mm-hmm. and I mean, it looks like, and it seems like, obviously in our in our fantasy football rookie draft, it's going to be heavy to the running backs. But it looks like a lot of people's fantasy football rookie drafts going to be slanted to the running backs. Oh, this running year. backs back and it's Ru- hotter than ever. Running so backs going right to be now. hot and heavy all 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 that Hansel is so hot right now. For a, Hansel. Yeah. Half to the first two thirds of your rookie drafts probably going running back. So are you staying with guys at the one two? Answer the question. Answer the question. All right. So Don't Tom Brady me and plead the I know fifth. what you just I said. I I love the opportunity talent connection here. I like Darius Geis, his opportunity and talent comes together. His talent with the team's opportunity for needing somebody to come in and pound a rock. Alex Smith's checkdowns could add PPR points in a hurry, even if Chris Thompson's healthy. You do have your two minute offenses and you have your sub, you know, you got your bring in Chris Thomas Thompson packages, but you don't always run it on first down. You don't always run it on second down because then you, you know, they would load the box and know what you did. Like there's going to be plenty of catches for this guy with with the way Alex Smith works because Alex it's not even a it's not even a shot at Alex Smith it's smart when you make the defense defend the flats because you check it down to a running back mm-hmm. or right over the middle when the pressure comes and the de- and the linebackers drop off into coverage and you dump it right over the line and the Darius guys catches it right. I'm saying there's going to be plenty of potential checkdowns coming from a, a smart veteran Alex Smith not a checkdown city Alex Smith because he can't do any other thing right. he knows. He knows a la Saints offense, spread them out a little bit, make them defend right, le- you know, flat right, flat left, and then he, he's going to spread them out. And I think that Darius Geis has all the opportunity in the world here to blow up with some PPR points and not just be one-two grinder, not catch any passes. So the question at so, hand here? Yes. Oh, there was a question. Yeah. Um, Answer the question. I got no problem taking guys at one two. Sure, I, I, it's one of those things like between guys. There guys, hesitation there. There is hesitation because I could Aww. be. I'd be just assume. I'd. I'd be nope. I have no problem with Nick Chubb myself. Like I. I think. I think guys is fine at one two. But there's. I think there's two or three options there that I'm happy with. And I'm. So it's in a way, man. I'm not. It's not a. It's not a like. I, the draft happened and all, and he slipped a little bit. But it's not like like I. I like all. I think I like Nick Chubb just fine, and I'm. You know I. I I could make an argument for taking Nick Chubb here and not be upset at all about it. I like Nick Chubb a lot, um, but I guess what I'm what I'm saying is like really kind of all these guys have a little bit of a question about what is going on with it. Like Rojo, like there's already people are already questioning whether he's an every down running back, and I know he just got in a good situation. Penny just went to a situation where you know if you want Great to talk situation. about the offensive line or any of that kind of stuff, like. Maybe they aren't the best running team available to go to, and, right. and maybe you don't believe in what Penny has going on. And then you got Carry On Johnson, and it's the Lions. And then you got um, Darius Geis here, where you're like, oh well, you know, who know? Maybe he's just a one-two down grinder. And Nick Chubb's got Carlos, Carlos Hyde, Hyde and, and Duke, Duke Johnson. Johnson. So all these guys have a little bit of question marks. So really, like, what actually changed? For the one two to one three to one four, I don't really think that much changed for me. I think I'm still pretty okay with taking guys at two here. I like regardless that. of what my team is. I like that. Um, I, I yeah, I could make it. You know, I I feel I like Chubb a good bit, and I feel pretty safe taking Chubb. So if, I'll take Chubb at one two, but I'm probably gonna roll the dice and take the guy like Geis. Yeah, and and see what comes out. I I kind of knocked you there for your hesitation, but I mean, it took me a second being on the clock. You know, we're we're doing this mock draft, and and we're kind of faking, we're fucking it up, so we don't. Fuck it up. We're mocking it up so we don't fuck it up. And, and we're picking for, you know, teams that we're, we're in this this home league together, as, as we mentioned on the intro. 
And, and I mean, I, I hesitated. I looked through the team. I looked through team needs. You know, this dude's got a pretty solid team, even though he's picking second. He lost Aaron Rodgers last year, so that will tank any one QB team if, you, if you're not stacking up on quarterbacks, which you shouldn't be in a one QB league. But I, so, I mean, I had to think about it for a little while, but right. I was basically just trying to find reasons not to take guys. And like, I, I really couldn't, I really couldn't find one. I yeah. read into why he slid and then I was like, ah, f- I, that. I could care less about the slide. Right. Really? Right. Yeah, like, I mean, that's really the only thing that gave me any hesitation. Right. I mean, if, if he didn't slide and he was a second back off the board, would there have been any hesitation? Exactly. Time? Right. Good, good point. So the, the slide gave me some hesitation, but the bottom line for me to wrap it all up is just the talent is through the roof. He plays so mean. He's the definition of chip on your shoulder. And he's got even more ammunition now that he was the seventh running back off the board. So right. he's going to come out there with a, he's just so determined to. And, and, and we mentioned how he is a banger, and that leads to being injured, but he also played really well through injury. Right, no. He played through oh, he's tough. Injuries. He's tough. I didn't mean it like he's just going to be nicked up and sit out. like you know. Right. But, I mean, he played well through injury at LSU. Like, listen, like the Redskins, I like Alex Smith. People don't like Alex Smith. I think Alex Smith is just fine. I think he's going to QB3 last do, year? Get out of here. Do great over here in Washington. I like they have some weapons around him. He just wants him. to be wanted. They have pieces there. <laughs> they I have want a you decent, to want me. They have a decent offensive line. They have Trent Williams on one side and Morgan Moses on the other side and uh, Brandon Sheriff. Sure. Sheriff. In the uh, they got some guys. Right, right they guard. Got some hogs. That right guard. They have. They have. Just got hurt. They last dealt right. with injuries. Both Trent a ton of and injuries. Like sure. we said last, like a couple podcasts ago, two two uh, guys went down within three plays against the Cowboys. I think it was. Yo, they so, had eleven offensive linemen play a hundred and forty or more snaps last year. Right, and running backs these, only averaged one point two nine yards before contact. All these landing spots kind of have question marks surrounding them. Is, is kind of what you I was poke getting. holes in, at, at, in bef- them, at before. Yeah. Not they're not. I don't have really problem with any of them. I like all of them, and I'm okay with taking any one of these backs that. We're talking about in the right. top couple. Okay, so let me piggyback that for my closing here. The, what we have going on here is the one, two, and we got Darius Geis. So there's two elements here: there's Gar- Darius Geis and the one, two. So if Darius Geis is your boy, you might be able to get him in the one, three, one, four spot because of some other things that's going on. If you're in the one, two spot and you want Darius Geis, take him. If you're in the one, two spot and you're like me and you really don't care because you like like four of these guys and you're in love with them, you could potentially trade down from the one, two to the one, three or one, four and make some money, make some equity for your team, some few draft picks or pick up a, a you know a good player in addition to to move from one, two to one, four and just grab a solid running back because there's four, five, six options here that makes it make us all salivate, if you will. So just wanted to throw that out right. there in my closing. If you're in the one, two and you're undecided, just trade back to one, three or one, four, do it slowly. Trade back a pick or two at a time and continue to yeah. just crush those, those pickups and just and throw some more money in the bank there. We're, if you feel really solid about it, grab your Darius guys. If you're sitting at the one, four, you might even get Darius guys. Anyway, this, the whole rookie after one, one, basically one, two, one, three, one, four is just basically up in the air to the eye of the beholder. But like right. Jason said, if Darius Geis went in the end of the first round as a second back off the board, he had been the one-two all off season. Probably would have cemented it. But now there's question marks all over the place. Just take advantage of it, whichever way your your gut tells you, and enjoy your fantasy team. And, and we're centering this kind of mock draft a little bit more around like a home league that we have. So it's a little bit more realistic when you're making picks because there's a roster in place here. But for us, everyone in this room is is running back mostly heavy especially in rookie drafts right. really in any draft although i find myself part. with these top end wide receivers just wanting to take them all the time i don't right. know why i want to and but there's then nothing I, wrong with that but it's like casey's about to say but there's only a couple of those i'm, but, I'm like all the other well, what i'm saying is, is like we're not we, we can kind of take the team aspect out of what we're doing here for us personally for now out of, the top out of this. like you know for Basically, me, the first for us, six or seven right, picks. For us, for the first, you know, maybe maybe five or six picks, unless you absolutely are like ridiculous that you got a bunch of running backs and you are just barren at receiver, and there's no no nothing wrong with taking a shot on DJ Moore after, in my opinion, probably Sony Michelle if you really wanted to, right? Because you just have maybe you have Le'Veon Bell and Ezekiel Elliott or something like that, and you need those you're teams just, are possible. You're barren at that. Or you got a you got a good one and a bunch of twos, and I know we just said that it could go the other way, but I'm saying for these first couple of picks, my roster doesn't matter that much right. in this class because I'm taking the running back. Yeah. That's why I haven't even talked about Clayton's team. Right. Exactly, for here. See, it doesn't matter who's on his team. Like we brought to you, like we told you when we first started tonight, 
The, we did this last year. We were looking forward to this mock it up before you fuck it up. Last year we did this. We had a couple of wide receivers that were arguable in that top top area. Um, you know, obviously the tennis, Corey Davis, Corey Davis was there in that very top. You, you plenty could, of people will make an argument for for DJ, DJ Moore, Moore being in this argument. It's just yeah. not for us at this particular time. Uh, yeah, I've, at this I've particular seen, point in I've the draft, seen some people trying to put their foot down for Christian Kirk in the top six or seven of a rookie draft. But like this is that ain't a, for me exactly. So that's and to, it doesn't what, matter. My roster is the point that I was making exactly. The first so we, we'll we'll talk more about these teams as the picks go on. But yeah, for the first four, five, or six picks here, is the teams are kind of, to us philosophy wise the it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're taking running back. And you know this, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, the commissioner's telling us the new pick is in, but you're going to have to wait because we're up against a break here, Commish. Yep. This first segment has been brought to you by Revelry Brewing Company, our main sponsor. The best craft beer Charleston has to offer. Whether you're local or just visiting, you got to hit up their rooftop bar. And coming soon, their new location, The Hold. They'll be specializing in barrel-aged and sour beers. All right, let's get to this break, and we'll be back with more Mary to the Game. 